there's still trouble at Netflix. When he has finally had it with Harry, William tells him, you're not my brother. All family ties are irreparably broken after an explosive phone call. Good morning and thank you for tuning in to the UK Royal News Trend. One thing that hasn't changed about Princes William and Harry is that they both have explosive tempers despite their growing differences. They say that Harry took the brunt of his older brother's wrath after watching the explosive Netflix expose. While publicly remaining silent, sources tell us that after watching the first three episodes, Wills was utterly furious. Harry's suggestion that he pressured into marrying the Princess of Wales due to a male royal temptation to find a wife who fits the mould. Especially about the insinuations made about Catherine, William is said to have called Harry directly to have it out with him. According to a source close to William, from what we hear, Harry stood firm throughout the entire seven minutes. According to reports, Princess Diana's once close sons are now an all-time low, due to the six-part series and the rumoured phone call. Harry went harder on the royal family than William ever thought possible, the source says, even though it was bad enough that Harry let Meghan describe Kate as formal. The series also portrayed the Commonwealth to which their grandmother had devoted her life as a racist institution. Apparently, what set off Wills was the fact that the show featured excerpts from Diana's interview on Panorama. After the backlash over the interview's acquisition, he requested that it be pulled from circulation permanently. But here we are. We have Di's own son dragging it out for views on a streaming service. The source snips. William is so upset that he claims, it's like I don't have a brother anymore. A second source confirms that William is hurting, but insists that he will always be Harry's big brother, despite William's strong stance. William would be so repulsed by Harry that he wouldn't be able to look at him. But everyone around him knows not to be publicly slam Harry. The source says it doesn't matter how hurt and disappointed Wills is, he won't listen to anyone else speak ill of Harry. At least in this respect. Their sibling bond has not been severed. Yet. Meanwhile, the Sussexes and their attorney, Jenny Afia, have used media and public relations to shift attention away from other matters. They claimed that without any evidence to back it up, Jenny Afia has made unsubstantiated claims that she has evidence of negative press briefings about the Sussexes. Believe what they tell you at face value. The couple of Harry and Meghan has been accused of being used to deflect attention away from Prince Andrew by many of their fans. A poor performance, if that is the case. In January of 2020, when Andrew was demoted, the Sussexes also took a step back. Since Andrew is so universally disliked, there's no point in trying to create a difference in non-existent opinions or fake outrage in situations where there is genuine outrage. His story is as interesting as watching paint dry, with the exception of his demotion to an invisible royal, headline settlement and outrage over his prominent role in Prince Philip's memorial service, all of which received extensive media coverage. No hack worth their salt would ever waste a true scoop, so it's safe to assume that whatever newsworthy developments other family members wanted to keep out of the papers weren't all that important. Only the Sun, Mirror, Express, Mail, Evening Standard, Times and Telegraph are included in the rural rotation. The Independent is partial to the Sussexes, while the Guardian is strongly anti-monarchical. As a result, unflattering information about the other rules would still leak. In November 2018, the media finally broke the two big stories that they had been sitting on for some time, Tiara Gate and the Crying Duchesses. Instead of making a conscious deal with the palace, the timing of their release, six months after the wedding, suggests that the media tore up the contract to report favourably in exchange for access. It's unclear whether or not deflection occurred, much less in whose favour. So, until someone comes forward with proof... All you can do is speculate. Security is also a concern, but in a different way. Before their withdrawal, that, whichever it was, when Meghan said they were fed to the wolves, she was referring to being made scapegoats for their actions, while they were actually helping others. While Meghan's comments about having no safety net at all, resembling being fed to the wolves, is aptly analogous to your original inquiry, it must be placed in the proper context. 
put out to pasture suggests that there was no help from the palace press office. When we say someone was fed to the wolves, we usually mean they were literally given to the predators. They would have a legitimate gripe if the palace did indeed file a brief in opposition to them. Such a bold assertion is unsupported by any evidence. Similar to how unsubstantiated the claims were that someone in Archie's family had made racist remarks about his skin colour. This explosive complaint of Oprah's is noticeably absent from the docuseries, despite the fact that many other complaints have been given a more thorough airing. An individual reduction in security measures was inevitable. During their terms as royal representatives, the monarchy has funded its provision by the Metropolitan Police and the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. They were no longer entitled to state support because they were no longer monarchy representatives. Harry's sense of entitlement and naivety are misplaced, despite his obvious anger at the decision to relocate. The problem with Meghan and Harry is that they made a lot of bold statements that weren't backed up. In other words, you must decide whether to buy them or not. People have the right to their own opinions. Like any good scientist, I put my faith in science over superstition and conventional medicine. Regardless of the monarchy's racist past, their present status is what is important. While Queen Elizabeth is certainly fascinating, she is largely irrelevant to the discussion at hand. In 2022, the cost of the monarchy was calculated to be £1.29 per person, and this did not include the 10% increase in the sovereign grant for reserving of Buckingham Palace. That's reimbursement for costs incurred while performing work for the government. Do you think they should foot the bill for hosting foreign dignitaries, diplomats, ambassadors, heads of state, holding their own investitures, opening their own hospitals, etc.? Sovereign grant disbursements are always equal to 15% of the Crown estate profits that are sent to the Treasury. And, since the monarchy holds the equity on behalf of the people and cannot sell it, the state gets to keep 85% of the profits. The Queen paid a 25% tax on the income from the Duchy of Lancaster, and Prince Charles pays a 25% tax on the income from the Duchy of Cornwall, down from 50% before he had children. They contribute greatly to the society overall. Same goes for you. What are your thoughts on this matter? Share your thoughts in the section below and we'll discuss the Sussexes and their royal family. If you find my video to be helpful, please hit the like button and spread the word among your friends. Please don't be shy about signing up for future updates on the UK royal news trend by subscribing to the relevant news channels. Now, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I wish you a pleasant week. Hoping to see you again in the future.